Well, hi there, and welcome to the screencast on linear momentum. This is a continuing screencast and a series of screencasts on topic two in IB Physics, the core curriculum. This is about mechanics. So in this screencast, we'll define momentum. We'll talk about conservation of momentum and how that can help us analyze collisions and yes, explosions. So let's get started. So linear momentum is defined as the quantity of motion. I think this is a direct translation from French or maybe Italian or maybe both. It's given by this equation here. Momentum, the symbol used is P. M is mass. V is velocity. So momentum is the product of mass and velocity. That deserves a box. And it's useful in analyzing collisions and explosions. The units of momentum, if mass is in kilograms and velocity is in meters per second, and the product of those two gives us units of kilogram, meters per second. Now, usually when we have some units that get kind of messy like this, we assign it some other single name, but that hasn't happened with momentum. There's no single unit uh, used to replace this. So we'll just say that momentum is units of kilogram, meters per second. In terms of conservation, what does it mean when something is conserved? Well, if you have a quantity and it's conserved, that means it's accounted for somehow, right? It doesn't go away. It's not created or destroyed, and it doesn't get lost. It's identifiable, every bit of it. It can be transformed to something else or transferred perhaps to another object. And as an example, let's take money. Everyone likes money, right? You can earn it. You can have money coming in, and you can spend it, money going out. It's all accounted for. In fact, that's what accountants do. You can transfer money, like from savings to checking or vice versa, maybe to PayPal. And money can be transformed into some other form, like uh, an iPad or power tools. So let's talk about conserving momentum. What does that mean? Well, we're going to define conserving momentum in terms of some event. And we have a before and an after situation. So we'll take like a, ball, a couple balls here that are going to collide. Let's look at the momentum. If the momentum of this smaller ball is four units of momentum to the right, we'll leave off the units uh, for now. Just focus on the numbers, make it a little easier. And this larger ball, more massive ball, has uh, a momentum of eight units to the left. Now since they're in opposite direction, momentum is a vector quantity. Right, so we need to establish that they have different signs. The total momentum of these two together, the sum, would be negative 4, or 4 to the left. After they hit, so this one, it was going 4, has 4 units of momentum to the right. It's now got 3 units of momentum to the left. So it's turned around. It's going the other way after they bang into each other. This one was going 8. It's now going 1. So it's slowed down considerably. Notice the total momentum here is, again, negative 4. So this is a clue that, hmm, maybe momentum is conserved. Let's uh, look at another example. We have a soccer ball, and we're going to have a header of the soccer ball, and we're going to have Elvis do that. So Elvis's head has some momentum. It's set four units of momentum to the right, and the ball's moving a little more, uh, has less momentum. Let's say it's momentum of the ball is one unit to the left. So the total momentum here is three units of momentum, that is three to the right. Now by conservation of momentum, we know that we've got to have a total momentum after the header happens, and it still has to be three. So let's look at what we have here in terms of Elvis and the soccer ball. So Elvis's head has a smaller momentum, let's say that is like one to the right. What would the momentum of the ball be? Well, if the total is 3 and Elvis is 1, then this one has to be 2. And that is to the, to the right. So we were able to, using conservation of momentum, find out what the velocity or momentum of this ball was after the collision. There's another example. Let's take an explosion. Have a firecracker. Well, it hasn't gone off yet. And the total momentum here is 0 because it's not moving. But after it explodes, you have a piece on what well, we know the total momentum has to be zero again, but you have a piece on one side, right? It's got a momentum to the right, and a piece on the other side, it's got a momentum to the left. So the momentum on the right, we can say, is maybe eight arbitrary units, 
And on the left, well, if the total is zero, we know this momentum of this piece has to be negative eight. Okay, in general, conservation of momentum, we can say that before and after an event, all right, the momenta, or the sum, of all objects, before and after, has got to be equal. In other words, it's conserved. The Newton's cradle thingy that we play with sometimes is a, a great example of conservation of momentum. If you look at, say, a mass of one ball, or a ball has a mass of one, and it comes in with a velocity of one, so that is one times one, you have the momentum of one, and the ball that's exiting, or that's leaving, it's one ball, so it has a mass of one, and it's got the same velocity of one, so that also has a momentum of one. So momentum is conserved in this, in this collision. Take a little harder example. We have a car. Its mass is 1,000 kilograms. It's traveling at 5 meters per second. It hits a truck that is at rest, and the truck has a mass of double that of the car. Their bumpers will lock. They stick together. What's their velocity? after the collision. So we need to use conservation of momentum in order to solve this problem. This is what happens when um, accident investigators, right, they really use physics. They use conservation of momentum. So we have, here's some pictures to help us understand what's going on. So before we have our thousand kilogram car moving at five meters per second, we have our truck which is at rest. It's uh, two thousand kilograms. So the momentum before is you get a thousand, that's the mass times velocity here times five. And there's no momentum contributed to the truck because it's at rest. So we sum those together, we get 5,000 kilogram meters per second. And then the accident happens. And afterward, right, they lock together and they move off as one, one vehicle, one unit. And we don't know what the velocity is, but we do know their combined mass is just the sum of right, the two of them here. So the combined mass is 3,000. So we can say the momentum after is our mass times velocity. The mass is 3,000 times our unknown, V. Well, from conservation of momentum, we know the momentum after has got, all, got to be 5,000 still. Now, if we take this simple equation, we solve for V. We get V is about 1 and 2 thirds, 1.7 meters per second. Um, looks like we're cheating on significant figures there. It should really be 2 meters per second, but that's all right. We'll cheat a little bit. Okay, that ends your screencast on momentum and conservation. Hope that helps. See ya.